Hello and welcome to Promenade Culture Center. This is Culture Corner. We bring you the authentic stories of creative individuals. One of these wonderful individuals with us today, a designer, Mr. Romain Danger. Welcome to Culture Corner. Bienvenue. Thank you. It's really great to have you here today. Uh, and learning from your biography, talking to you, I realized you lead a very busy life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is great to hear with people related to culture, really. Mm. Um, it's uh, important that we keep this field dynamic. So usually with our guests, we start with talking about how everything really started. Mm -hmm. Because choosing the path is uh, not an easy thing to do of what we will do professionally in life. Mm. Was your interest in art, in design, in culture always there? Do you remember that in early childhood? Yeah, um, actually, yeah. I, I never stopped drawing, I believe. Mm. Um, my parents are, um, were owning an antique store. So I was like uh, in a cradle of like uh, uh, frames and paintings mm. and a very busy apartment of uh, sculptures mm. and things like this. So they were not necessarily telling me much about it, but I had this surrounding mm. around myself and a lot of um, French and uh, Belgium comic book mm -hmm. like uh, Asterix, Tintin, Lucky Luke, and then other more adult one who really make me like uh, like this uh, discipline. And how about school? Um, we we uh, often comment on how school is not terribly supportive to children who want mm. to pursue arts, even even nowadays. Mm -hmm. Was that different at the time? And were you even uh, practicing it at school? W were you supported to do so? So, um, yes, we had like um, uh, art classes mm. and I did some options in art and cinema and so on. But um, my, my major was in science. And actually, for me, the link between art and science is very close. Is the um, like the process, the the way you are analyzing things, and uh, the the way you will uh, realize things are very close to a scientific process. And while I was studying science in biology, chemi chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, physics, and whatever, you you always need to do. Um, uh, drawings, ske skits, sketches, sketches, yeah. sketches mm. and yes. So um, it's always something who've been part of my life. Uh, and I, I wanted, I attempted to continue in the uh, science field, but um, it was not like uh, medicine was like too long of a study after I finished my bachelor and I was like, no. Uh, I went toward like a bio biology university and uh, the amount of employment was too low when I went to the open day they're like uh, don't even try if mm. like it's, it was 20% or whatever after a master and I was like for that many years of study and my dad like um, you're drawing every day you like this you, you do comics and whatever and like why you're not trying in this field so I had the support of my parents for that, and that was beautiful. And yeah, but um, I'm. I guess it's like um, uh, th there is still this um, um, barrier from the, the the parents thinking that it's a it's an art field, mm. but. Uh, Lately, I guess, maybe as well with internet and mm. all those uh, content creator and things like this, things are a bit more easy. Mm. Uh, even so, I meet a lot of people here in Kuwait who uh, decide to go through a, a classical... Uh, oh, yeah, the training... Um no, doesn't take a... like uh, uh, going through the path of a normal job because mm. the family will not allow them, even so if they are like amazing artists, super talented, self, self-taught. And uh, yeah. So you studied design? Yes. And uh, um, did this, um, was it a difficult path? Uh, because sometimes the training, the curriculums are gruesome. Mm. And um, a lot of people we talk to say it takes a toll on creativity. Mm. 
How do you uh, find your own expression while studying and trying out different things? You studied in France? Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, the school was a school of applied art. Mm -hmm. So it did a lot of classical techniques, sculpting, life drawing, it did perspective. Help you. A lot, mm. a lot. I mean, like you, you forget about it through time and what mm. uh, you are doing. Uh, but it's like, yeah, it it um, bring you rigor and mm. uh, a discipline. Yeah. yeah, discipline. And it's yeah. amazing how many people report that actually um, it gives them the power of handwork. Mm -hmm. um, so, and nowadays when we see the appraisal of crafting again yeah. and the appreciation for crafting, a lot of people yeah. are reminded how they actually did it in school, yeah, yeah. but might have never attempted it again. The, for me, the school was a good uh, place for try things mm. without uh, having a client to, like you, you, you can go through your entire freedom, experimenting things that you want. It's like that was the, the time where I tried so many different things. Uh, if it works, doesn't work, doesn't yeah. really mind. But it's the time for experiencing things. And uh, you are for quite some time now in Kuwait, right? Yeah, 16 years now. Did your journey start in a way, international journey, start mm -hmm. in Kuwait or you were elsewhere and then came to Kuwait? No, uh, straight after my grad, uh, graduation. How did that come to be, if you're if you're happy to share? Yeah, yeah. It's mm. a strange story. I mean, actually, I was um, I was 24 and uh, I was not really aware of international job market. And I did an internship um, near the Swiss border in France, and I really liked the region. And I was like, when I was looking for a job, I was looking uh, in France. And then I like, why not Switzerland? It can be something mm -hmm. interesting. And then I was like, OK, I'm in France. How do I find a job in Switzerland? So I was looking and searching something in Switzerland opened the door of the international job market. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, OK, there is things everywhere, actually. My English was not that good, but um, I replied to a couple of job offer. Mm -hmm. And there is a guy who, who liked my portfolio. So he contacted me. I was like rehearsing my interview with my friend in English. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went well. And like, uh, when uh, when can you start? Like when do you want me to start? And, and we were on Friday, so next Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, in a week I was like uh, in Kuwait. <laughs> was that um, was that a bit of a surprise, a bit of a shock to you? Did you have any contact with the with the culture not before? A, not at mm. all. Mm. I actually um, my, my my final exam project was about um, uh, conceptualizing uh, a city without car. Mm. So I called the French embassy, I'm like, how how can you uh, do transportation in Kuwait? I, oh, it's like, uh, it's highway, uh, it's a city of highway, so you need to drive. And my, my, my <laughs> what I was wishing the most yeah. when I finished uh, my graduation was to not drive and just use public transportation, uh, cycling or walking. And uh, so this was like, actually... Um, um, a, a, a big difference of mm. what I was aiming, but uh, no, I yeah I didn't know the Middle East. I was um, fresh from mm. any kind of uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it was just a, um, in a week time such a large change for you. Yeah, and also far away from whatever new as a background, a language, mm -hmm. family, friends. Mm -hmm. um, would you say, usually for people of art and culture, we say they easily adapt. Would you yeah. say that was the case or it took some time? I, I, I don't know. I will not speak for everyone. Mm. But in my case, uh, I'm, I'm not someone who necessarily belong to a group or mm. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm a lonely wolf. So, yeah, it was not that hard to adapt. I'm, I'm very curious. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a, like a blessing. And through designer's eyes, uh, how did design look like in Kuwait at the time? Uh, you came to work in what in what field? What industry? Uh, branding. Mm. Uh, I got hired uh, as a art director for mm -hmm. a branding uh, agency. 
and um, coming here in Kuwait, I'm still like surprised every day. After 16 mm -hmm. years, things are still like amazing me. Mm -hmm. There is always things, uh, new things, and uh, so visually it was like uh, rich. Mm -hmm. And what allow Kuwait as well is like it's kind of in the middle of everywhere. So mm -hmm. I've been able to travel a lot and I discover other uh, country in the GCC and further in Asia and so on. That mm -hmm. was nice. We were talking prior to taping how you are multifaceted. You mm -hmm. cover different uh, fields in art, you're interested in, interested in different things. Uh, your daily job, mm -hmm. um, what do you do? What does it look like? And how much is it what you were hoping it would be in terms of design? So before mm. uh, I established my uh, design studio, mm -hmm. um, I was just an, an employee mm. working in creative and uh, whatever was the Uh, yeah, needs the need. of the clients. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then after I established the design studio now, I'm more toward, I have uh, six uh, employees in Vietnam, mm. uh, two people uh, co I collaborate uh, with here. Plus, uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of integrated in uh, among different marketing departments. So mm. I'm working as well with other team. Uh, who have the request. So I'm, I'm kind of a hub mm -hmm. of things and uh, I deal with the different creative. I'm still creating, but it's not the main things that I'm doing. Mm. So I'm facilitating all the, the things. <laughs> and uh, of all the projects you've done, you've conducted in Kuwait, yeah. what were the most challenging ones or the, the most complex ones? Complex... Or the most fulfilling ones? Uh, like... I'll say uh, the, the TFK one, mm -hmm. working like... Uh, um, the, it was a project for Sheikh Majed Al Sabah, mm -hmm. who used to be uh, the, the guy who established Villa Moda. Mm -hmm. um, amazing person in terms of creativity and uh, ideas and vision. So randomly meet in the office and he said like uh, I'm starting this business uh, come in my office I was 20 yeah 25 something mm. like this um, I show him what I was doing what I was able to do and little by little we build the full brand and I uh, like I had to travel I have to follow the production I had to take care of mm all the things, like all the signature over the production, if there is mistake, whatever, it's like uh, all on your shoulder. And after like uh, all the opening internationally, Dubai, New York, London, that was like quite a great adventure for 10 years. Mm. Yeah. Quite some time. Yes. What is your favorite part of the process? Of design process do you have one or do you equally enjoy i, I, I think i enjoy the full things mm. uh, but it's uh, uh, i mean there is a lot of projects who end up in the garbage so mm. i would say like the the pre the, the research and this part is uh, very important and is this is the one where i will have the most data Because, as I said, there is a lot of things we end up in the trash. So I will kind of cherish even the things who are not uh, selected. Mm. And then after you have like all the, the production process. Uh, and when the product is finally coming to life, that's like something with uh, uh, an achievement. Like uh, for... Uh, Lately, we are working uh, for Tamdin Entertainment. Mm -hmm. We created mascot. We created like uh, big uh, figurines, mm -hmm. uh, fluffy stuff and plush. So you design them and then they come like to life in, in different way. That's like uh, pretty, pretty amazing. And in this period of 16 years, you mentioned some of the things you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, Um, do you get to engage a lot with um, uh, artists as well, mm -hmm. with the cultural scene of Kuwait? Uh, do you see it changing? What is your take on it? Uh, 
from your perspective, obviously. It's rich, mm. but it's not. Uh, it's not in a high of every. Mm. Uh, like it's there is still a gap with uh, the amount of people who are gifted and talented mm. and uh, how it's showcased. Mm. Um, even so, I mean, gallery are coming up and down, and there is like uh, there yeah, is yeah. The, the the classic one like who 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 still there, but they are looking for more. Um, um, how to say? I don't want to say like uh, great artists, but it's like mm. renowned mm -hmm. artists or people who made their proof. Where here there is a lot of people who are talented and uh, are just willing to show what they are able to and this is I, I, one of the points as well for why I created Warsha mm. it was to meet those people and um, kind of do something like in a uh, affordable way of art uh, we don't do much exhibition and curation mm. because I'm busy with a lot of other things but yeah. when we can it's like uh, we try to to showcase the the people that we find now that you have mentioned uh, that studio yeah. <laughs> um, i think it would be great to if you could tell us uh, uh, how that idea was born mm -hmm. um, and uh, what it represents mm -hmm. and what it is actually so warsha is um, like uh, independent printing press mm -hmm. we are mainly doing risography we had it the gicle print recently to uh, what we're doing. I'm doing a bit as well of uh, recycling paper mm -hmm. and different things, but mainly it's like um, risography printing. Uh, the idea came up when uh, I was in Vietnam, one of uh, the interns working at, at the studio, Tadong, mm. uh, in Vietnam. She was working on her final exam and she came with some prints she, she was doing. And I was like, what is this? Like, that's amazing. It looks like screen printing, but it's not screen mm. printing. It's very rich in color. It's like, oh, this is this new thing who open. It's uh, um, in Vietnam, it's called komuk. I mean, mm. like the splash of ink from the squid mm -hmm. or the ink squid, uh, something like this. And uh, I was like, that, that's great. Like I took everyone to do a workshop there uh, and I discovered it there. Uh, and for me, it's, it was like, as soon as I came back to Kuwait, I searched if it was available. Mm -hmm. And actually, Kuwait used to have a lot of those printer. Oh, because it, it's something, it's a technology from the 80s. Mm -hmm. So they used to have like a park of 2,500 printer in a, in a country. Uh, mainly was like school and um, ministry. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe they are still there, hidden or oh, trashed or somewhere. Oh, definitely. We should just try but, to find them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the the people from uh, Rizzo in France, who is like providing the ink and stuff, they're like, uh, we don't sell anything anymore. So there, it's dead. Mm. Like there is nothing, because the it's been reacquired by the artist uh, community worldwide. Lately, actually, by. Uh, the rise of uh, uh, digital printer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who, uh, because those printers were, were called duplicators, so it was a cheap way to have a lot of copies of the same document. So school and ministries were good for that, mm -hmm. like, and not a lot of color, one or two color. So red and black or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, that was uh, why it was popular. And then um, digital printer, became like the ink became cheaper and mm. the rice. So they, they trash the Rizzo and replaced by those new technology. But how much more expensive is it really? Uh, like what in to print? Yeah. Well, for us now, it it's not that cheap because we are the only yeah. one. Uh, mm. Actually, now we are two to have it in Kuwait, but mm. it's like... Uh, the machine is a special type that yeah, you have to acquire. Yeah, it's a special, mm -hmm. exactly. And the ink, ink well. and its drum and stuff. Mm. And so, but so what I liked in the process is that it gives you this very rich uh, colors. And 
And for, as you're speaking, people who will watch this will yeah. be able to see these things <laughs> behind you that were printed there. Yes, yes. These are our neck tube zines from a children's program and they're gorgeous. And so for me in Kuwait, so I came back from Vietnam. I was looking if it was available. So I made mm. my research is not available. So I was like, OK, I will make I will bring one. Why? Because um, I was not happy with all the, the digital uh, render, mm. especially when you work with a local company, small uh, concept restaurant and things like this. I've been designing a lot of restaurants. Yeah. And when you do menu invitation and things like that, you cannot go with the offset process and print uh, thousands of copies. Yeah. So you have to go smaller quantity. And the Rizzo is a good balance between a small quantity and higher quality yeah. than a digital printer. And it, since it worked like a screen printing, as I say, it's been acquired by the artist community to, to play with it and make a different kind of I think there's not a like single this. person who doesn't see the difference. Mm -hmm. Everyone sees that yeah. it's something unique. Yeah. We have that yeah. experience when we share our zines, yeah. uh, that everyone comments on it, be it a child or mm. an adult. It just stands out. The yeah. colors are standing yeah. out. That, that's because you can uh, uh, apply, like, it works like Pantone, basically. Mm. So uh, each color individual you want red, it's very red. Mm. If you don't uh, try to mix it, it's going to be like pure color. So that's something was I was fascinated when I discovered mm. it. And I like this, we need to bring it uh, to Kuwait. It will... Uh, so I, it was not the smartest uh, time to <laughs> when I brought it was just after COVID. Mm. So it was a, a bit complicated, but... Um, there we are. It's and, here uh, now, we're yeah, and it's, to, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I read somewhere you do workshops mm -hmm. as well. Um, what does this entail? Uh, how does it look like? So we try to make awareness of this type of mm. printer. Uh, we've been doing uh, different workshops with you and AUK mm. to actually educate their, their uh, students, students about yeah. it. Um, th this is a type of printer with actually a lot of uh, worldwide, a lot of university are having to train directly their student at the university. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, because it's for them, it's making them understand the full process, but mm. in house in a not a semi large square, uh, scale. Yeah. So and it is for like... students only, or do you also work oh, with no, no, no. We, the audiences? We, we work with everyone. Mm. So we, we do, we have some commercial work, we have some artistic work, we do our own uh, print, and we have like a mini store where we sell posters mm. and things like that. So we, we have like, we tried as well to make Maybe it. Maybe we can share where you are located. Yeah, in the Safat Studios. Mm. But we are not there uh, a lot. It's more of a part-time thing mm -hmm. because I'm very busy on of other course. things. So it's more like mm -hmm. uh, on appointment and uh, things like that. So now, given how of a multi-potentialist you are. How do you balance these things in life? Where do you rest? Where do you create new ideas? Uh, from midnight to six on the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep and the rest of the time I'm like uh, doing for, things. For um, um, I remember early on when I was studying um, what makes creative people actually create mm -hmm. a lot of it had to happen in a time during a period of time of leisure and when we don't do anything do you manage to get this time for yourself when new ideas pop in mind well i i'll say um, i'm always working and uh, always having leisure i mean i enjoy mm. what i'm doing so i'm always in this mood even sometimes there is hard things and yeah. stress and whatever but i'm always trying to keep it uh, You're one of the lucky ones yeah uh, found uh, yeah. the job that you like and that actually is uh you will never work a day in your life they say uh, if you do kind, what you like kind of yeah. yes yeah um, you've mentioned vietnam mm -hmm. and the studio there and it's actually interconnected with the story of kuwait yes so you first came to Kuwait and then Vietnam happened, yeah. if I understood well. Mm -hmm. How did that um, begin? So it happened because uh, my workload 
was becoming, I was alone mm -hmm. and I was doing a lot of things. So I was doing with TFK, like I was mainly working with the cinema and then I, at night, I was like changing my cap yeah, and yeah. working on other <laughs> stuff. So I was busy with a lot of things and TFK grow and the other client grow. They had a small location uh, restaurant and then they had like three and then they open mm. in Qatar and UAE and uh, and whatever. Like, yeah. And I was like alone was not um, capable and mm. people were still wanting to continue working with me. So um i i studied in vietnam with um uh, uh sorry i studied in france with a mm. vietnamese person his name is uh tamin chai mm -hmm. and uh, the, the idea actually was like to leave kuwait i was like okay I stop all this and I'll go to Vietnam mm. uh, and because he opened um, a, a design school with one of our old teacher there. Mm. And when I visited him, I said, like, when you open the school, I'll come and I'll teach with you. And uh, so all this happened at the same time. And I was like trying to leave and people were like, no, no, we want to continue with you. So I was like, look. What do we do? Say, so I have designers from the school, and what, uh, why you, and you need like people to help you. So, mm. why we don't open a studio? Okay, and that's how it happened. So, it works, uh, um, you work simultaneously in a way in both places, yeah. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you travel frequently? Um, before COVID, I used to travel every two, three months and stay between uh, one to three months. And mm -hmm. now after COVID, I will tend to stay more in Kuwait. Mm. Uh, what new uh, knowledge did this work bring you, the one in Vietnam? How was it different compared to what you do in, in Kuwait? You, is it more of a teaching educational role there? Mm -hmm. um, or it's also a... Yes and no. I mean, yeah. like, uh, uh, I I learned how to delegate. Mm. Oh, it's it's a huge <laughs> knowledge. What we all strive for. Yes, mm. and uh, the, because I was doing, I, I I used to be used to do everything by myself. Do you think this and... is like a trait for creatives that we kind of attempt to do everything on our own, or it's more of a personality trait? It's I, for me, it became like something that I had to acquire. Mm. Like uh, it was uh, if I was still trying to make everything by myself, I will just kill myself. Yeah, I it, will the, the, the work burn fails. Out. Yeah. Yeah, it suffers. Mm. Mm. And it's either I try to carry on doing everything that I like with the people that I like, or I just choose one person and being mm. dedicated with this one only person. And I choose to carry on. And then it's like, it's a matter of choosing as well the collaborator you work with, the designers you work with to trust them and to, to yeah. I don't say it's perfect. We always have like up and down, but it's mm. like, uh, yeah. Do you still manage to follow the, the scene in France, for instance? No, not much. No, it's like uh, I got gaps of uh, somehow uh, seven years. I didn't go back to France in a row. I'm, so I've been there more, more times yeah. than you in these past years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I went a few times. Yeah, in the past couple of years. No, as I said, I've been taking this opportunity of being in Kuwait for traveling mm. elsewhere. So I discover so many other country. Mm. And then when this uh, Vietnamese adventure started, uh, I was between here and there. So, yeah, and, uh, and my parents come here to mm. see me. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. That's such an interesting life story, honestly. <laughs> and it's just kind of happened in a week of time yeah. with, uh, with a sudden choice. But a bold one, and I think very, uh, very typical for, uh, for a young person, which is, mm. which is really great. Um, I since you work basically in both corporate world and mm -hmm. you also pursue these individual projects, mm -hmm. obviously you enjoy them both. Mm. Um, but um, uh, what are some of the challenges of of working uh, for corporations? 
for you as a designer or for you personally, whatever mm. you choose to share, what, what are some of the biggest challenges? Um, because there's a lot of positives, obviously. There is so many challenges mm. when you work in corporate with clients and it's like uh, understanding what they want, mm. uh, trying to have a work process to avoid change in the future mm. or too many change in the future. Um, trying to uh, elaborate like a, a workflow with them, with like something smooth and mm. who, who, who have not no lose in communication. Uh, so this is what's important, I believe, in the corporate world mm -hmm. to achieve those uh, kind and of And the results. smaller projects, they bring some challenges as well, right? Even though they're independent and maybe uh, easier to control. It's... Uh, if, if I take Warsha, for example, mm. it will be more of... Um, mechanical things because I have to deal with the machine and I have oh, yeah. to deal with uh, the, the the client part is uh, maybe like they are there they they see what we are doing but it's more like uh, uh, dealing with the process of what we're doing I, I, I started as well to do now some screen printing I, mm. I got like a machine to do screen printing I was saying I was doing uh, recycling paper so I tried I, I made the the um, the back and the, the frame myself because I was not finding that. Oh. I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, trial and fail mm. things. So when the process is working, I try to keep it running in a smooth way. And um, how do you decide on, on like what's the next project? So obviously, I guess, given that you still work for corporate mm -hmm. um, and you have a daily job that's demanding on its own, mm -hmm. it has some of its own needs and it kind of dictates itself. Mm -hmm. But if you can influence it, how do you decide what's the next project? Well... There is, even through Warsha, now we are planning things with, uh, we got a couple of uh, independent uh, print exhibition at Bonjiri. Mm -hmm. So we are turning Bonjiri into like an art space and Mimi is doing a barbecue outside yes. and we're transferring inside. The whole place actually looks like it's been printed, yeah. you know, in a, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. So... Um, uh, we are working on new project and we did two uh, sessions who was uh, quite successful. So mm. this time we are trying to change a bit the themes. And so it's always like, I don't know, I, I like the people I'm working with. And it's mm. like always, I don't know, I'm... I'm th it there gives is no, you the like, energy. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I say it's like through... Uh, discussion with people it will lead to another things another project oh let's do that maybe we don't have the time now it will come later or like oh let's do that and it will happen at the moment so i don't know for my personal project uh, these things of bringing the rizzo was kind of like uh, uh like, uh, I don't know, a bet. I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know if it will work or not. You know, I was just passionate the, about the yes. the technique and the stuff. And like, uh, so. Yeah. Are there some more goals related to Warsha that you still kind of want to achieve? Obviously, you're raising awareness yeah. on, the te on the possibilities and techniques. Um, most likely printing more mm. for the people I was mm. telling you, like yeah, those yeah. local uh, talented artists and maybe having exhibition or having their art. Do you uh, work with children? Do you create anything for children? We'll, we do a lot of children's programs and yeah. uh, we're always interested how people see this particular group because these are future culture consumers. We did a couple mm -hmm. uh, of uh, workshop targeting directly children and we had as well children coming to our normal workshop and actually it's nice they are with the adult and they are doing the same and they are understanding the process mm -hmm. and they are with with them and I, I like actually the fact that you're not segregating mm. uh, only children or only adult because at the end it's like uh, both of them are it's a session of two hours mm -hmm. so it's not 
that long for them and if you make it like uh, entertaining enough it's like uh, oh, yes if you have a fun element yeah yeah they are able to 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 catch up and i, I with the energy of the adult actually they are like uh, doing things so mm. yeah um i was wondering uh, given how much contact you have with artistic scene and mm-hmm. artists and uh in Kuwait, um, are there some things you particularly enjoy seeing um, in this scene in Kuwait? Um, do you have a gallery you like? Um, is there a type of a, maybe a project in mind? We were just before this, you were mentioning a cinema and your love for cinema. Yeah. What, what more of it would you like to see in Kuwait? That's not that maybe directly related to what you do, but something you would enjoy. But for me, it will be more like... Uh, I, it's a, in a, another type of art, but uh, it, it's actually coming a bit more. But live concert, mm-hmm. this is something maybe I've been uh, uh, missing. Even so, there were like a very cool concert uh, I have been mm-hmm. here or theater play or whatever. Actually, you know, I don't think I'm missing anything. It's just like happen. Yeah, it's uh, things you didn't necessarily thought you will go watch, mm-hmm. and it's there, and it's like really good. So, yeah. And what about some inspirational places in Kuwait? Um, a lot of people we've spoken to in this in this show um, share that they enjoy seeing some significant buildings. Mm-hmm. Others like the sea. A lot of it are inspired by the sea and the the history of the mm-hmm. sea. Uh, Failaka mm-hmm. Island. Uh, is there something that particularly inspires you and you like frequenting? For, for me, it will be so maybe it's linked to my past, but antiques. Mm-hmm. I, I like uh, the Friday market, I like those antique oh. places. Do you repair things? Do you do something yourself? Do you, yeah. Can you find time for that? Yes, I do. <laughs> That's great. To <laughs> I hear. didn't have to do it much here, but uh, mm-hmm. in Vietnam, I did it uh, this summer and uh, in France when I was younger, I was doing some mm-hmm. stuff. We had uh, one of our guests was a Celia Koub, um, the yeah. artist, and she shared that a lot of her research, because she does a lot of research, mm-hmm. she's a research-based artist, comes from these antique yeah. um, um, se- sellers of books, mostly. Mm-hmm. And um, We did d- mm-hmm. just uh, these uh, books about the history of the cinema. Mm-hmm. We worked with uh, someone called Bonashi. Mm-hmm. He, he was collecting things like uh, crazy. And before that, when we opened the 360, we did this mini museum of mm-hmm. the history of the cinema. And unfortunately, the cinema have no no data kept so mm. i have to find things i found an antique guy out of a, a city page uh, oh. uh, magazine who was uh, in in a coffee shop it was in arabic like this guy looked like an antique guy can we call him maybe he have ticket we call him he had ticket we go to his place and he had like so yeah i like those kind of things and i i like to merge those uh, old technique, old design with modern things. Mm. Uh, I've been doing um, this lately for a, a restaurant select in 360. Mm-hmm. So it was mixing like those Art Deco, Art Nouveau and different kind of stuff. I asked my mom to do some uh, scan of books and uh, mm-hmm. old stuff from France. She was sending me the, the things because she had a lot of uh, old books. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, now that you're mentioning 360 and uh, we're also located here on top of a commercial center mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's a specific um, um, thing you have to deal with. Um, it's like a task to give life uh, to something that's cultural mm-hmm. in a commercial center that's not necessarily seen as a place, as a venue yeah. of culture. So how do you inhale life into things that are commercial? This is something then. That- I like about Kuwait, Mm -hmm. it's uh, how actually there is so many branding for restaurant, coffee shop and so on. And because actually it it happened lately, Mm -hmm. I think this wave of uh, local concept restaurant and stuff started like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's... You had more and more designers who have this culture of things. And I really like those local concepts who are f- mm-hmm. full and rich of ideas. So I, 
for, for me, even a, a, a brand can be like cultural in a way. Mm. You can tell a narrative. You can, uh, through the people who is leading it behind uh, whatever they're infusing into it. So you can have things this way. What are you mostly occupied with these days, professionally? Professionally, we just finished the 70th anniversary of the cinema. Mm -hmm. There is a, a fashion talk happening at the end of this month in uh, um, the cultural center in the Shab. Um, Jaber. Uh, yes, Abdallah uh, Salem. Abdallah Salem mm. Cultural Center. Uh, very interesting as well. It's the second uh, uh, session, the second mm -hmm. uh, opus happening. Um, and uh, otherwise, like uh, Warsaw mm. and some branding uh, there and there. Well, <laughs> our, one of our Nectop cycles is just happening. So you can expect us with a new zine very okay. soon <laughs> in a few weeks time. Yes. Uh, and uh, hopefully um, we're planning big. Um, I think uh, we started end of 21 and we usually have like two seasons per year. Mm -hmm. So after a number of seasons, maybe next year, we're planning a larger publication. It would be interesting to to look whether we can do something like we're doing the zine. Because I think um, in the way we are a small center trying to achieve uh, a larger cultural consumption in Kuwait, we're also striving that our publications and our products are somehow unique. Mm -hmm. And this is where we kind of find a common ground with Warsha as well, mm -hmm. which is really amazing and kind of um, makes sense when you say looking for people you want to work with mm -hmm. and uh, raising awareness about the unique technique and yeah. so on. Yeah. Um, would you be willing to share some future plans with us? Um, so, your private and professional life are very intertwined, yeah. intertwined because they're very <laughs> artistic. Uh, yes, in its take. So the big, big things, uh, the, the things actually I'm working for now five years is uh, we have a house uh, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we want to turn it into like uh, a residency oh. space and the uh, exchange. Residential center, yes. And trying to find a way to make a bridge between the Middle East and Vietnam and have those artists and techniques and things. I don't know yet. We just mm. finished the house. We'll see. But this is something we've been like uh, occupying my mind for a few years now. Mm. Um, and then here we uh, started um, again some uh, live drawing session with the art course studio. Mm -hmm. So we're collaborating together. Uh, I'm posing and people come and do uh, life, uh, life drawing uh, because it's something I used to do in Warsaw mm -hmm. and uh, we decided to continue with uh, Abderrahman and there is it's where as well there I find uh, I meet uh, incredible talented mm -hmm. Um, That's the best part of our job. Yeah, yeah. It's how I survive life, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Just interacting and exchanging with great people. So this, trying to develop some uh, new product with Warsha. This is something I've been like mixing uh, mm -hmm. the recycling paper and doing, uh, uh, I'm planning to do Hebrew workshop. I'm planning uh, to make... Uh, uh, sewing things like mm -hmm. uh, mix with papers and so on. So I'm experimenting to provide new workshop and new product mm -hmm. for what we are doing at Warsha. Um, what else? And uh, preparing markets, mm -hmm. <laughs> things like this. Oh, do you do you go to these? Do you participate? Yeah. Uh, been selected to the future Shakshuka market. Mm -hmm. Well, the good uh, weather is coming, yes, so we're looking exactly. forward to those. Uh, we might uh, actually uh, organize, I spoke with Asil and try to organize mm -hmm. uh, something at Safat, mm -hmm. something uh, uh, like targeting those kind of people, who talented people, but who don't necessarily have the, the fund to pay uh, 150 kD or yes. Like to participate to those kind of markets, yeah. 
it has like uh, what do you do at markets do you do you exhibit products yeah, or we, you you we, share information about no the... it's more like selling the posters we're doing mm-hmm. cards and things like this mm-hmm. this is what is paying the rent as of well of course <laughs> So that's uh, that's why we're doing this, mm. and uh, as, as well the awareness mm-hmm. about what we're doing and so on. Do you ever organize like open nights for people to come and see the studio to realize what it is about? So we had the one before the summer. Uh, it was uh, uh, a night for re- we were doing recycling paper, and people were as well uh, able to exchange and. Uh, see the studio and what we're doing mm-hmm. but uh, we did only one and yes maybe i will do more when i find the time <laughs> if that kind of time exists yeah. well our time flew very fast uh, thank you so much for this conversation so thank many you. things to share uh, we are looking forward to your future events thank you looking forward to cooperating more with you and obviously see you again at culture corner thank you very much thank you thank you again bye